again to be back for another one. I am your host, TJ the Conservative Hustler. And let's just see what the hell going on now. Two details now about a parking dispute that landed a convicted felon back in jail. Bill Miston joining us live. Bill, what's the backstory here? Well, Ted, 32-year-old Remington Barrage got out of prison last year, and part of his parole, he was ordered to not possess any weapons. Well, now prosecutors say he not only possessed a weapon, but shot at a neighbor twice earlier this summer. Okay, so this is getting out of prison. No, you're not supposed to be around any guns. You think he turns his life around by working, being a good civil citizen? No. Starts the shooting at his neighbors. Wow. Public streets, public parking. But prosecutors say 32-year-old Remington Barrage was peeved at a neighbor about where they parked to the point of shooting at them 14 times. The shooting caught on surveillance video. The defendant shot at a victim on June 1st because the victim parked near the defendant's. On June 2nd, the defendant is alleged to have seen the um, victim and then brandished a gun. It all happened near 28th and Ruby, where Barrage used to live in this home on the corner. Police raided it days later. He wasn't there. So you're living in the house. Pretty decent. It doesn't cross your mind to where this could be my last day walking around my front yard. My last day going to the mailbox. My last day enjoying a beautiful day. Cutting my grass. Uh, maybe going to work. Hey, maybe getting a girl over tonight. I want to throw it all away. Because I want to shoot at my neighbor. Who parked in the spot. Not to my liking. And if I'm the Uncle Tom Coon sellout, what in the hell is he? There, but a woman was. Inside her purse, police found a 9mm, the same type of gun used days earlier. A month ago, prosecutors say Barrage approached the same neighbor. Kids overheard Barrage say he should have killed the person when he had the chance. And that Barrage was upset over having his house raided, saying... It wasn't that serious. You didn't need to call the cops. But 14 shots were a warning. Could have kept it in the streets and shot back at me. I bet. So imagine that. This is the thinking where we at. He's sitting in the living room. And following brain, you, and I know. Telling a brain dead girl who's with him how mad he is and that he should have killed her. The kids overhear this and now use that to incriminate him. Wow. Know where you work. The victim told police Barrage drove away, but not before pulling out a gun and firing. Barrage was booked into jail this week. He also has a DOC hold for his prior 2016 conviction of possession with intent to deal heroin. Prosecutors recommended $25,000 cash. No, I can't afford $25,000. Of course you can't. You also couldn't afford to shoot at your neighbor for not parking the way you didn't like, sir. This is why you're in the predicament you're in. And this time you need to sit in jail a very long time. And this is what happens when you let violent animal thugs out on bond for getting caught up selling big bundles of heroin running around with guns on them. They get out and commit more violent crime. Duh. Not your turn. This is a, a bail hearing. A commissioner set his bond at twenty-five thousand. I'm sure you cannot possess any guns. It's a really simple order, but so many people have trouble following it. Anytime you possess a gun, you're a walking class G felony. There you go. You see, that's what you want. Walk around the community, all right. You don't want nobody like me calling it out. But that's what you want to walk around the community, huh? Okay. And if I'm the Uncle Tom Coon sellout, what the hell is he? Oh, my goodness. 14 times? Picture having him as a damn neighbor. 
Oh, man. Whew. They knew he was a nut job. They, they, they knew he was a nut job. It just wasn't his first time being a nut job. I just don't believe it. Good evening. Youngstown Police and the Youngstown Catholic Diocese are investigating after a young girl was found with a loaded gun on a school bus. Yeah, it happened Monday as the child was on her way home from school. Sydney Canty has been working this story. So, Sydney, what has police, what have police told you? Well, Derek, Youngstown Police are saying that an 11 year old girl had a gun on her inside of St. Joe. And don't let that just blow over your head either. 11. Okay. 11. Some of you badass kids are tormenting some of these kids so bad at 11 to make them feel safe. They think they have to bring a gun to school with them. Not just talk to a parent. Not just talk to somebody at school, another adult. Bring a gun. Wow. Joseph, the uh, provider school and on the school bus as well. It was discovered on the bus, though, when some students saw it, they notified the bus driver and he decided to uh, go and investigate himself. He found a Glock 43 with four bullets inside of the magazine. And at that point, he had to call the police. When they arrived, they investigated the young girl and asked her why she had the gun on her. She said she was tired of being picked on all of the time and that it was her mother's gun. Now, that young girl was arraigned this afternoon. Uh, she's been charged with, uh, or she arraigned on charges of CCW charge, as well as. Uh, Hello, Miss Jones. Yes, this is such and such from um, the school. Can you step outside? We have a moment. Uh, can, can, can we have a moment to speak? And I imagine giving that call at work. Not only is your baby in trouble at school, they got her in the office. They need to talk to you because. They caught her with a gun. Okay. Talk to your kids. Check on your kids. Every day. Legal conveyance of a weapon on school property. Fifth degree and fourth degree felonies here. Um, she's also been sent to uh, the just juvenile justice center uh, where she has to be uh, psychologically um, performed a, a um, an exam on her as well. We spoke to the school who tells us that uh, they didn't know about any kind of bullying, that they talked to the students and the teachers. None of them knew that she was being bullied. She has been expelled from the school and that they are trying to also. Wow. Now she's all suspended. Life all throw it upside down. It could have been a good kid too, man. It's just what happens now when it's so many kids ganging up on one kid assing around, won't leave the kid alone. Wow. Also get uh, metal detectors as well. We did speak out or reach out to the child's mother and we did not uh, hear back from her. Madison. Check on your kids, people. Check on your kids, people. Wow, that's sad. 11? Hmm. <sighs> Check on your kids, people. Check on your kids. Start tonight with an 11 call for action investigation. Police are asking you to look out for this man. Colorado Springs police say Kataji Hopkins stole money by. Look at her. Kataji Hopkins. Uh huh. Stealing money, huh? Us. Always us. Oh, sustain. Oh, look at me. Fresh. Got his little fit on. But the systemic pressures of racism made it. Oh, you. Stop that asking to make calls on people's cell phones. When handed the phone, police say he's transferring money from Venmo. Police believe the same man was doing this in May at UCCS, which we told you about then. That's right. Now we have an update. Reporter Melissa Henry is joining us live from a King Supers parking lot near South Academy and Highway 115. That's where police say some of these incidents have happened. People have been targeted. Police are telling people don't hand over their cell phone to keep safe here. 
Adam, police say the suspect is targeting shopping centers like this one, where he can easily walk up to someone and ask if he can quickly borrow their phone to make a phone call. Detectives say this suspect was arrested in May in... Look at him, another fresh fit. He getting fresh off y'all, licking off y'all. So now we have a new swift, clean cut. Well, not clean cut. We have a new sophisticated animal thug. Stick out this nappy head. So he's not your typical violent stick em up animal thug. Now you can't even let nobody use your phone. You can't even be nice no more. So don't let nobody use your phone because he's trying to creep in your apps and wire money. Instead of getting his healthy, able bodied black ass a job, probably already has a job, just being extra devilish. Go do something productive with your time. This is what he want to do. And if I'm the Uncle Tom Coon sellout, what the hell is he? Douglas County for doing the same thing there. They tell me he was in custody there for about two months, but they now believe he's out and back to the same scam. They expect he's also targeted. Caught him up one time. There we go. You kick and holler and scream to let him out. You let him out. Think they're going to live right? Be civil? Of course not. When you let violent criminals out, and when you let slick, educated criminals out that's going to steal money from you, bring your bank accounts down, when you let them back out, what do you think they're going to do? More crime. Duh. New Center Point, a shopping area near Powers and North Carefree, reports have come in from there recently. Police confirmed at least 16 victims in Colorado Springs, up to an estimated $15,000 has been stolen among them. One of the recent cases at Ulta Beauty, he already, he preempted the victim by saying he'd already asked the store to use their phone and they didn't want him behind the counter. So he already had a story ready to go as why he needed a phone. Police say you can still help someone if they need to make a call, but here's how to do it. Be sure to dial the phone number yourself and you can put the phone on speaker. That way you can still help, but you're controlling the phone the entire time. Wow. See that? Okay. You like that? I thought you liked that. Family and friends. Please watch them babies. Don't let nobody use your cell phone. And to the next time. Stay humble.